Let us pray. Remember your mercies, O Lord, and with your eternal protection, sanctify your servants, for whom Christ your Son, by the shedding of his blood, established the Paschal Mysteries, who lives and reigns for ever and ever. Amen. A reading from the prophet Isaiah. <clears throat> See, my servant will prosper. He shall be lifted up, exalted, rise to great heights. As the crowds were appalled on seeing him, so disfigured did he look that he seemed no longer human. So will the crowds be astonished at him, and kings stand speechless before him. For they shall see something never told, and witness something never heard before. Who could believe what we have heard? And to whom has the power of the Lord been revealed? Like a sapling, he grew up in front of us, like a root in arid ground. Without beauty, without majesty, we saw him, no looks to attract our eyes. A thing despised and rejected by men, a man of sorrows and familiar with suffering, a man to make people screen their faces, he was despised, and we took no account of him. And yet ours were the sufferings he bore, ours the sorrows he carried. But we, we thought of him as someone punished, struck by God and brought low. Yet he was pierced through for our faults, crushed for our sins, on him lies a punishment that brings us peace, and through his wounds we are healed. We had all gone astray like sheep, each taking his own way, and the Lord burdened him with the sins of all of us. Harshly dealt with, he bore it humbly, he never opened his mouth. Like a lamb that is led to the slaughterhouse, like a sheep that is dumb before its shearers, never opening its mouth. By force and by law he was taken. Would anyone plead his cause? Yes, he was torn away from the land of the living, for our faults struck down in death. They gave him a grave with the wicked, a tomb with the rich, though he had done no wrong and there had been no perjury in his mouth. The Lord has been pleased to crush him with suffering. If he offers his life in atonement, he shall see his heirs, he shall have a long life, and through him what the Lord wishes will be done. His soul's anguish over, he shall see the light and be content. By his sufferings shall my servant justify many, taking their faults on himself. Hence I will grant whole hordes for his tribute. He shall divide the spoil with the mighty, for surrendering himself to death and letting himself be taken for a sinner, while he was bearing the faults of many and praying all the time for sinners. The word of the Lord. Father, into your hands I commend my spirit. Father, into your hands I commend my spirit. In you
Second reading, a reading from the letter to the Hebrews. Since in Jesus, the Son of God, we have the supreme high priest who has gone through to the highest heaven, we must never let go of the faith that we have professed. For it is not as if we had a high priest who was incapable of feeling our weaknesses with us but we have one who has been tempted in every way that we are, though he is without sin. Let us be confident then in approaching the throne of grace, that we shall have mercy from him and find grace when we are in need of help. During his life on earth, he offered up prayer and entreaty, allowed in the silent tears, to the one who had the power to save him out of death. And he submitted so humbly that his prayer was heard. Although he was son, he learned to obey through suffering. But having been made perfect, he became for all who obey him the source of eternal salvation. This is the word of the Lord. Passion of our Lord Jesus Christ according to John. Jesus left with his disciples and crossed the Kidron Valley, where there was a garden into which he went with his disciples. Judas the traitor knew the place also, since Jesus had often met his disciples there. So Judas brought the cohort to this place together with the guards sent by the chief priests and the Pharisees, all with lanterns and torches and weapons. 
Knowing everything that was to happen to him, Jesus came forward and said, Who are you looking for? They answered, Jesus the Nazarene. I am he. Now Judas the traitor was standing among them. When Jesus said to them, I am he, they moved back and fell on the ground. He asked them a second time, Who are you looking for? Jesus the Nazarene. I have told you that I am he. If I am the one you are looking for, let these others go. This was to fulfill the words he had spoken. Not one of those you gave me have I lost. Simon Peter, who had a sword, drew it and struck the high priest's servant, cutting off his right ear. The servant's name was Malchus. Jesus said to Peter, Put your sword back in its scabbard. Am I not to drink the cup that the Father has given me? The cohort and its tribune and the Jewish guard seized, seized Jesus and bound him. They took him first to Annas, because Annas was the father-in-law of Caiaphas, who was high priest that year. It was Caiaphas who had counselled the Jewish leaders, it is better for one man to die for the people. Simon Peter, with another disciple, followed Jesus. The disciple, who was known to the high priest, went with Jesus into the high priest's palace. But Peter stayed outside the door. So the other disciple, the one known to the high priest, went out, spoke to the doorkeeper, and brought Peter in. The girl on duty at the door said to Peter, Aren't you another of that man's disciples? He answered, I am not. Now it was cold, and the servants and guards had lit a charcoal fire and were standing there warming themselves. So Peter stood there too, warming himself with the others. The high priest questioned Jesus about his disciples and his teaching. Jesus answered, I have spoken openly for all the world to hear. I have always thought in the synagogues and in the temples, where all the Jews meet together. I have said nothing in secret. Why ask me? Ask my hearers what I taught. They know what I said. At these words, one of the guards standing by gave Jesus a slap in the face, saying, Is that the way you answer the high priest? If there is some offence in what I have said, point it out. But if not, why do you strike me? Then Annas sent him bound to Caiaphas, the high priest. As Simon Peter stood there warming himself, someone said to him, Aren't you another of his disciples? He denied it. I am not. One of the high priest's servants, a relation of the man whose ear Peter had cut off, said, Didn't I see you in the garden with him? Again, Peter denied it, and at once a cock crowed. They then led Jesus from the, throne, from the house of Caiaphas to the praetorium, it was now morning. They did not go into the praetorium themselves to avoid becoming defiled and unable to eat the Passover. So Pilate came out to them and said, What charge do you bring against this man? They replied, If he were not a criminal, we should not have handed him over to you. Pilate said, Take him yourselves and try him by your own law. The Jewish authorities answered, We are not allowed to put a man to death. This was to fulfil the words Jesus had spoken, indicating the way he was going to die. So Pilate went back into the praetorium and called Jesus to him and asked him, Are you the king of the Jews? Do you ask this of your own accord? Or have others said it to you about me? 
am I, O Jew? It is your own people and the chief priests who have handed you over to me. What have you done? Mine is not a kingdom of this world. If my kingdom were of this world, my men would have fought to prevent my being surrendered to the Jewish authorities. As it is, my kingdom does not belong here. So then, you are a king. It is you who say that I am a king. I was born for this. I came into the world for this, to bear witness to the truth. And all who are on the side of truth, listen to my voice. Truth? What is that? And so saying, he went out again to the Jewish leaders and said, I find no case against him. But according to a custom of yours, I should release one prisoner at the Passover. Would you like me then to release for you the king of the Jews? At this they shouted, Not this man, but Barabbas. Barabbas was a bandit. Pilate then had Jesus taken away and scourged. After this, the soldiers twisted some thorns into a crown and put it on his head and dressed him in a purple robe. They kept coming up to him and saying, Hail, King of the Jews, and slapping him in the face. Pilate came outside again and said to them, Look, I am going to bring him out to you to let you see that I find no case against him. Jesus then came out wearing the crown of thorns and the purple robe. Pilate said, Here is the man. When they saw him, the chief priests and the guards shouted, Crucify him! Crucify him! Pilate said, Take him yourselves and crucify him. I find no case against him. The Jewish authorities replied, We have a law, and according to that law he ought to be put to death, because he has claimed to be Son of God. When Pilate heard them say this, his fears increased. Re-entering the praetorium, he said to Jesus, Where do you come from? But Jesus made no answer. Pilate then said to him, Are you refusing to speak to me? Surely you know I have power to release you, and I have power to crucify you. You would have no power over me at all if it had not been given to you from above. That is why the one who has handed me over to you has the greater guilt. From that moment, Pilate was anxious to set him free. But the Jewish authorities shouted, If you set him free, you are no friend of Caesar's. Anyone who makes himself king is defying Caesar. Hearing these words, Pilate had Jesus brought out and seated himself on the chair of judgment at a place called the pavement, in Hebrew, Gabbatha. It was the day of preparation, about the sixth hour. Pilate said to the Jewish leaders, Here is your king. But they shouted, Away with him, away with him, crucify him. Pilate said, Shall I crucify your king? The chief priests answered, We have no king except Caesar. So at that, Pilate handed him over to them to be crucified. They then took charge of Jesus, and carrying his own cross, he went out to the place of the skull, or as it is called in Hebrew, Golgotha where they crucified him with two others, one on either side, Jesus being in the middle. Pilate wrote out a notice and had it fixed to the cross. It ran, Jesus the Nazarene, King of the Jews. This notice was read by many of the Jews because the place where Jesus was crucified was near the city. 
and the writing was in Hebrew, Latin and Greek. So the Jewish chief priest said to Pilate, You should not write, King of the Jews, but that the man said, I am King of the Jews. Pilate answered, What I have written, I have written. When the soldiers had finished crucifying Jesus, they took his clothing and divided it into four shares, one for each soldier. His undergarment was seamless, woven in one piece from neck to hem. So they said to one another, Instead of tearing it, let's throw dice to decide who is to have it. In this way, the words of Scripture were fulfilled. They divide my garments among them and cast lots for my clothes. That is what the soldiers did. Near the cross of Jesus stood his mother and his mother's sister, Mary, the wife of Clopas, and Mary of Magdala. Seeing his mother and the disciple whom he loved standing near, Jesus said to his mother, Woman, this is your son. Then to the disciple he said, This is your mother. And from that hour, the disciple took her into his home. After this, Jesus knew that everything can now be completed. And so that scripture should be completely fulfilled, he said, I am thirsty. A jar full of sour wine stood there. So putting a sponge soaked in the wine on a hyssop stick, they held it up to his mouth. After Jesus had taken the wine, he said, It is fulfilled. And bowing his head, he gave up his spirit. It was the day of preparation, and to avoid the bodies remaining on the cross during the Sabbath, since that Sabbath was a day of special solemnity, the Jewish leaders asked Pilate to have the legs broken and the bodies taken away. Consequently, the soldiers came and broke the legs of the first man who had been crucified with him, and then of the other. When they came to Jesus, they saw he was already dead. And so instead of breaking his legs, one of the soldiers pierced his side with a lance, and immediately there came out blood and water. This is the evidence of one who saw it, true evidence, and he knows what he says is true and he gives it so that you may believe as well. Because all this happened to fulfill the words of scripture. Not one bone of his will be broken. And again, in another place, scripture says, they will look to the one whom they have pierced. After this, Joseph of Arimathea, who was a disciple of Jesus, though a secret one, because he was afraid of the Jewish authorities, asked Pilate to let him remove the body of Jesus. Pilate gave permission, so they came and took it away. Nicodemus came as well, the same one who had first come to Jesus at night time. And he brought a mixture of myrrh and aloes, 
weighing about a hundred pounds. They took the body of Jesus and bound it in linen cloths with the spices, following the Jewish burial custom. At the place where he had been crucified, there was a garden. And in this garden, a new tomb, in which no one has yet been buried, since it was the day of preparation, and the tomb was nearby. They laid Jesus there. Would you please have a seat? He calls your name from the cross. Three hours on a cross would have felt like a lifetime. Yet on the cross, he pardons sinners, cares for his mother and the disciple whom he loved, redeems us through his sacrificial blood. St. John Chrysostom wrote about the Passover. In those days, when the destroying angel saw the blood on the doors, he did not dare to enter. So, so how much less will the devil approach you now when he sees not that figurative blood on the doors, but the true blood on the lips of believers, the doors of the temple of Christ? Through Lent, we have studied the book Lent with the Beloved Disciple by Bishop Michael Marshall. Father Brett yesterday said it was a book that we will go back to again and again. Today we are talking about being loved by the sacrifice of Jesus on the cross. In this book we have read and studied, we have looked at the life of Jesus from his entry into Jerusalem on Palm Sunday, being hailed Hosanna in the highest heavens, and today now seeing him crucified. We see the power of love by his sacrifice on the cross. Marshall's book points us to the intimacy of this relationship we have with the Lord, like the beloved disciple John. Today, when we look upon Christ on the cross, we see ourselves, we see our sins that put him there. We see also that powerful mystery where Jesus understands us in all her humanity and our redemption waits for us there. This is the Son of God we are looking at on the cross and this is how our God reigns. Our world is broken like his body on the cross, broken in body, in mind and in spirit. We see warfare and hatred. We see division and greed. We see totally dismembered and unconnected points of view. Yet, on this wooden cross that reaches up to north, down to south, left to east and right to west, all points of the compass to the limitless bounds of reunification in Jesus Christ. Marshall speaks of koinonia. This means that all will eventually come back together again. The enemies become friends, hate becomes love, secular becomes sacred. All time and all ages are united in a web Marshall describes it like the internet web by the Holy Spirit. All is made whole by the blood of his sacrifice. Last night's sermon challenged us to get down and grimy in washing each other's feet. Today we see Jesus' blood mingled down in the dirt. All is made whole again. All is made clean. Today is about knowing the joy of being redeemed and what the power of love can accomplish. 
It is about understanding that God knows us. Even the hairs of your head are all numbered. Do not be afraid. You are worth more than the value of sparrows. Come and see. Come and look upon the Lord of the universe nailed to a tree. During Lent, each week we have sojourned the way of the cross with our stations. When we reflect upon that relationship, when we do this devotion, I am struck by how the help us to understand concepts such as pain and suffering. Today we see our relationship with Jesus as being a God of connectedness, but also a God of understanding. When our loved ones have died, are in pain, we know that God understands this. We also see other characters such as Mary, the mother of God. And if we have had a child who has died, she knows that connectedness. We also see other elements such as betrayal, as we've heard in the Passion readings today. When we are hurt by others when friendships die, or by when we are victims of racism, hate, bigotry, or crime, we need to feel that our Saviour understands us, which he does, and we are connected to him. This is the powerful message we need to proclaim to the world with confidence, that our love is real, tangible, evident. The world the world needs to hear that God wants mercy and forgiveness and we need to feel that sense of being loved in our lives. Marshall in his book describes the Nolotus shell. He explains this as the spire mirabilis, a spiral of the Nautilus shell in a logarithmic spiral of growth that often appears in nature. The first to describe this was Albert Durer in 1525, who called it an eternal line. More than a century later, the curve was discussed by Descartes in 1638, and later extensively by Jacob Brunulli, who called it Spire Mirabilis, the marvellous spiral, sometimes as sacred geometry because it can be found in a wide variety of constructs of nature, such as the pattern of the ever-expanding galaxy, the formations of hurricanes, and the patterns of seeds and sunflowers, cauliflowers, and pine cones. This concept hurt my head for about four weeks in terms of trying to understanding it. But if we look at it like this, we look at it as the imprint of God's love, his design, his hopes, his desires for you and for me. God's hope is that we know that we are loved. His son demonstrates his love for the Father by the sacrifice on the cross and for us. The Spirit is opening our hearts and our minds always to reach out and call us by name. That's why we're all here now. We are called by name, by the Spirit, united into a triune God of love. God calls us here today. And in a few moments, we will come together and we will venerate, we will kiss the cross. And if this is your first time to Good Friday, welcome. When we are kissing the cross, we are kissing love remembering the blood that makes the new heaven, makes all things new, and heaven's doors are opened wide again. So don't be squeamish. If you truly, truly love someone, you kiss them. And today is about remembering that the greatest author of love of all has redeemed us by his most precious blood.
Let us pray. The whole Church of God, that our God and Lord be pleased to give her peace, to guard her, unite her through the whole world, and grant that leading our life in tranquility and quiet, we may glorify God the Father Almighty. Let us pray, dearly beloved, for the whole Church of God, that our God and Lord be pleased to give her peace, to guard her and to unite her throughout the world, and grant that leading our life in tranquility and quiet, we may glorify God the Father Almighty. Almighty ever-living God, who in Christ revealed your glory to all the nations, watch over the works of your mercy, that your church spread throughout all the world, may persevere with steadfast faith in confessing your name through Christ our Lord. Amen. <clears throat> Let us pray also for our most holy Father, Pope Francis, that our God and Lord, who chose him for the order of bishops, may keep him safe and unharmed for the Lord's holy church to govern the holy people of God. Almighty ever-living God, by whose decree all things are founded, look with favour on our prayers and in your kindness protect the Pope chosen for us, that under him the Christian people governed by you, their maker, may grow in merit by reason of their faith through Christ our Lord. Let us pray also for our Bishop Jonathan, for all bishops, priests, and deacons of the church, and for the whole of the faithful people. Almighty ever-living God, by whose spirit the whole body of the Church is sanctified and governed, hear our humble prayer for your ministers, that by the gift of your grace all may serve you faithfully through Christ our Lord. Amen. Let us pray also for our catechumens, that our God and Lord may open wide the ears of their inmost hearts and unlock the gates of his mercy, that having received forgiveness of all their sins through the waters of rebirth, they too may be one with Christ Jesus our Lord. Almighty ever-living God, who made your church ever fruitful with new offerings, increase the faith and understanding of our catechumens, that reborn in the font of baptism, they may be added to the number of your adopted children, through Christ our Lord. Amen. Let us pray also for all our brothers and sisters who believe in Christ, that our God and Lord may be pleased as they live the truth to gather them together and keep them in his one church. Almighty ever-living God, who gather <coughs> what is scattered and keep together what you have gathered, Look kindly on the flock of your Son, that those whom one baptism has consecrated may be joined together by integrity of faith and united in the bond of charity through Christ our Lord. Amen. Let us pray also for the Jewish people, to whom the Lord our God spoke first, that he may grant them to advance in love of his name and in faithfulness to his covenant. Almighty ever-living God, who bestowed your promises on Abraham and his descendants, graciously hear the prayers of your church that the people you first made your own may attain the fullness of redemption through Christ our Lord. Amen. Let us pray also for those who do not believe in Christ, that enlightened by the Holy Spirit, 
they too may enter on the way of salvation. Almighty ever-living God, grant to those who do not confess Christ that by walking before you with a sincere heart, they may find the truth that we ourselves being constant in mutual love and striving to understand more fully the mystery of your life may be made more perfect witnesses to your love in the world through Christ our Lord. Amen. Let us pray also for those who do not acknowledge God, that following what is right in sincerity of heart, they may find the way to God himself. Almighty ever-living God, who created all people to seek you always by desiring you and by finding you, come to rest, grant we pray, that despite every harmful obstacle, all may recognize the signs of your fatherly love and the witness of the good works done by those who believe in you, and so in gladness confess you, the one true God and Father of our human race, through Christ our Lord. Amen. Let us pray also for those in public office, that our God and Lord may direct their minds and hearts according to his will for the true peace and freedom of all. Almighty ever-living God, in whose hand lies every human heart and the rights of peoples, look with favour, we pray, on those who govern with authority over us, that throughout the whole world the prosperity of peoples the assurance of peace and freedom of religion may through your gift be made secure through Christ our Lord. Amen. <clears throat> Let us pray, dearly beloved, to God the Father Almighty, that he may cleanse the world of all errors, banish disease, drive out hunger, unlock prisons, loosen fetters, granting to travellers safety, to pilgrims return, health to the sick, and salvation to the dying. Almighty ever-living God, comfort of mourners, strength of all who toil, may the prayers of those who cry out in any tribulation come before you, that all may rejoice, because in their hour of need your mercy was at hand, through the Lord. Behold the wood of the cross, on which hung the salvation of the world. Come, let us adore. Behold the wood of the cross, on which hung the salvation of the world. 
Come, let us adore. Behold the wood of the cross on which hung the salvation of the world. Come, let us adore. Sing life on the glorious battle, sing the ending of the fray, o'er the cross the victor's trophy, sound the loud triumphant lay, tell how Christ the world's saw man fallen, shamed and sunk in misery, when he fell on death by tasting fruit of the forbidden tree. Then another tree was chosen, which the world from death should free. Therefore, when the appointed fullness of the holy time was come, he was sent to make earth all things forth from God's eternal home. Thus he came to earth incarnate, Offspring of a maiden's womb. But he is among us dwelling, not in his earth Born for this, he needs his passion. Oh. 
that thy birth bestowed suspend, and the King of heavenly beauty on thy bosom gently tend. Thou alone wast counted worthy, this world's ransom to sustain, that a shipwrecked race might ever the support of refuge gain. With the sacred blood anointed from the lamp for sinners slain.
at the Saviour's command and formed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us and lead us not into temptation but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Saviour, Jesus Christ, for the kingdom, the power, and the glory of yours, now and forever. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those who are called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed.
Let us pray. Almighty and ever-living God, who have restored us to life by the blessed death and resurrection of your Christ, preserve us in the work of your mercy, that by partaking of this mystery, we may have a life unceasingly devoted to you through Christ our Lord. Amen. Bow down for the blessing. May abundant blessings, O Lord, we pray, descend upon your people who have honoured the death of your Son in the hope of their resurrection. May pardon come, comfort be given, holy faith increased, and everlasting redemption be made secure through Christ our Lord. <laughs>